In the last video, we sculpted the skin on the face. If you haven't seen that one, I recommend you check it out, because we covered the basics of the skin sculpting there. But in this video, we'll move on to the skin on the hands and feet to wrap things up. But before we dive in, the full real-time version of this tutorial, which is over three and a half hours of sculpting, from face to the body, hands and feet, is available on my Gumroad page. You'll also find a lot of other cool stuff in there, including the add-ons I made that are really useful for character creation. So if you're interested, go ahead and check it out. Link is in the description. All right, let's go. But first thing first, make sure you have a multi-res modifier added to your mesh. We want it to be at the highest sculpt number. I couldn't find any freehand skin brushes, so I made my own. These brushes are made for Blender 4.3 and later. First, place the brushes that are located in the download folder into your asset folder. Just copy and paste them there. The asset folder is usually located in the document folder. If you don't know where your asset folder is actually located, go to edit, preference, file path, and there's the path for the asset folder. Now fire up the new blender and you should be able to see the brushes in the sculpt mode. They all have names and thumbnails, so you will be able to identify them easily. First look at this reference image to see what hand scan actually look like. If we zoom in a bit, you can see there's a kind of circular pattern going on on the hand which is fully visible on some part, but really small and stretched on some other parts, closer to the nails. We need to replicate that here. First, let's take care of the knuckles. I mean the joints, these parts. I included few knuckle skin brushes in the pack. You can pick up any of them that you think looks better on your finger. Just click and drag it on the knuckles. Try it few times to get the size and rotation better on the knuckles. If you don't like it, switch to another brush to see if it's any better. Then we can lower down the strength and place one on the side of the main one so it have a better transition. Increase the strength again and do the same thing for the other fingers too. But we have to keep trying and place it at just the right spot. I'm trying my best so they don't look identical. It's better to place the main ones first, then lower down the strength and place the ones on the side. Moving on to the next knuckle on the finger, we have another brush that looks better for this area, which is this one. The process is literally the same. The skin on the parts where the main knuckles are located are usually more pronounced and has bigger scale, but the skin on the sides are usually gets stretched due to bending the fingers. So that's why I made another brush for it and you can just click and drag on the knuckles and it will appear on the model. Place it one by one on each knuckle and maybe fill it on the side too. Oops, we forgot this finger. Let's take care of this one first. Turning the camera around, we also need to add these to the back of the knuckles, which I have no idea what it's called. So I named the brush inside finger knuckles, which is a bit different than the one in the front. Keep placing these here one by one. If you look at your own hand, you can see there are similar marks right at the beginning of each finger. We should replicate that here using this brush. To make things easier, I made a brush for the front of the hand, where you just need to select the brush and just drag it on the hand. But first rotate the viewport so the hands is facing the top of the screen. Adjust the strength to a value close to this one. Then try to place the scan on the right spot. But the problem is, if you rotate and check the other side of the hand, you see it licked out to the other side. One way to fix this issue is to press N and in the tools menu under advanced, enable view normal. Now it only sculpts on this side. Okay, now we have a flat surface between each knuckle mark that we need to take care of. I have a brush for that called hand pores. You just need to click and drag to place these on the fingers. The skin texture on the fingers are usually stretched because fingers bend more than any part of the body. Yeah, even more than the part you were thinking about. So the skin gets stretched and fold many, many times every day creating this texture. So keep placing these while the texture is horizontal because that's what it looks like when the hand is in a neutral pose.
Some parts got too intense and disturbed the mesh. We can hold shift and smooth them out. Then apply the brush at the same direction to the area and just blend it in with the rest. Notice we haven't sculpted the fingerprint part. That's because we have fingerprint brushes. I have few fingerprint brushes here. Choose one and place it on the finger. It might be tricky at first, but as you try more times, you finally get it right at the position you want. Then do the same thing for the rest of the fingers, but make sure you sculpt it a bit different than the last one so it doesn't look identical. What we have been doing was placing it on the center of the finger. Now we should rotate the angle and place it on the side of the finger too. But rotate it in a way that the texture kind of blends in with the rest of the finger. I just realized I may have added too much on the front. So I smooth it out by holding shift with a big brush. Then replace it with a less intense brush. We can add a bit more to the sides too, but be aware that the intensity and amount of these wrinkles depends on the age of the character, so if your character is young, maybe not overdo it. For the back of the hand, we got another brush which is called Hand Pores 2. Pick that one up and start placing it over the knuckles. Shouldn't have put these here, so I smooth them out. Back to our stretch skin brush, place some between the knuckles. Then go straight up and around the hand using the same brush. Now let's add some veins using inflate brush to make drawing easier. We can go to stroke and enable stabilize stroke. For the complete menu, we can press N and in the fall off, set it on custom and play with the handles, bring it to somewhere like here. Mess around with it until you get round edges on the line. I think this is good, so we're gonna go with it. We don't need this much subdivision, so let's decrease it to a lower number, then start adding the veins while looking at our hand reference. Good thing about sculpting at a lower subdivision is you can easily smooth out any harsh edges you make by holding shift, and it won't affect the details you've added at a higher subdivision. If we look at some reference images, we can easily detect which part of the hand contains more veins. But obviously we don't want to overdo it. Some women have a lot of visible veins, but some don't. So make sure you do it based on your character. Then we can crank up the multi-res again and make the veins more visible if we want. Again, this is not necessary. You can intensify it only if the character has veiny hands. I found this reference image of a close-up fingernail. And if you look closely, you can see there are a lot of straight lines coming from top to bottom. These lines usually only appear vertically, so we need to use crease brush to add them. Pick up a crease brush with a low strength and start dragging it from top to bottom. Do that again and again until the fingernail is finished. The edges of the fingernail and the finger needs a bit more work. We can use crease brush and use control to reverse sculpt those areas to add a bit more edge to it. Then let go of the control and add a crease on the inside of the fingernail so we make it more pronounced. Start doing the same thing to the other fingers. Just create the vertical lines on the nails using crease brush with a low strength. Let's start working on the foot. First let's go to edit mode. And in the wireframe mode, in the face select mode, select the foot. Press shift edge to hide everything else. Now it's easier to sculpt just the feet. When we look at the reference images, we can see that the features are really similar to the hands, but it's kind of smoother. Although it really depends on how fat or skinny our character is. 
pick up the finger knuckle one brush and start clicking and dragging between the toes. So it creates a sort of stretch of skin in between each toe. Then we can use the hand pores two brush to add some textures to the knuckle area. Then switch to hand pores brush and add those horizontal looking pores all over the toes, just like what we did with the fingers. The direction should be horizontal on the toes, then it kind of bends when it comes to the sides. After that, let's use the same knuckle brushes we used for the fingers on the toes. Just find one that suits the toes best and start placing it on the joint of each toe. The process is exactly the same as fingers, so there's not much to say here. Also add some to the main knuckles, but with a really low strength. Moving on to the sole of the feet, I couldn't find any texture or image to make a brush for the toe print, so we have to make it by what we have. Use the fingerprint brush for the toe print, but don't scale it too much since it can't cover the whole toe. Instead, make one in the center and add another one to the sides, while keeping the transition as smooth as you possibly can. Try to get the lines to match with each other. Keep adding these until it basically reaches to the top side of the toe and blend in with the rest of the details. Toe print is usually not as uniform and pretty as the fingerprint. It's really hard to spot where these actually leads or rotates to, so this way you could replicate the toe print as close as possible to the real thing, and I don't think it would be noticeable at the end. Make sure to add these around the toenails too, cause those are the areas that are mostly visible. And if it leaked out to the toenail, make sure to smooth it out or mask it so it wouldn't get sculpted. Just like fingers, we can use finger knuckle brushes and start adding the same wrinkles to the bottom of the toes, just like what we did with the fingers. And also add some on the parts between the toes and the feet. On the bottom of the feet, we got some soft spots, which I have no idea what it's called. They also have sort of toe print texture, but a bit bigger and more noticeable. But we only have a footprint texture, so we have to make do. Since we only have the fingerprint brush, we need to add few of them continuously so they match with each other, instead of just placing a big fingerprint here. So make sure when you place the texture, the second one you apply matches with the one before that. You can achieve this by constantly rotating and skating up or down the brush. The direction is kinda like this. Let's switch back to our good old hand pores brush and fill in the spots here and there to give it a more natural transition. The strength is very low and I place it in the middle of the feet too to fill in the empty spots. I made another brush called Footprint. It's just a simple multiple line texture that we can use for the back part of the feet. With a really low strength, I repeat, really low strength. The strength should be low, otherwise it might ruin the mesh and create harsh edges. After that we got foot bottom brushes, which we can use for adding the scratches that are visible in the bottom of the foot. Add these in the center and some other parts of the foot randomly, so we have a more natural skin.
Also, don't forget to add these around the edges too. But I have to mention again that these lines and scratches are also depends on the age and gender of the character and obviously how dry is this skin. We usually have some on the sides too because these parts also folds. Also add some around the fingers to add more realism. Maybe some on the top too, but let me repeat again, the strength should be low. And this is the final results, hope you find it useful, as I said the real time full version of this tutorial plus the face and the body skin sculpting is available on my Gumroad if you're interested, I put the link in the description, check it out, see you on the next one, peace.